Hello, in this video I'd like to talk about three-dimensional coordinate systems. So recall, back in Calculus 2, we often work with functions in the xy plane or their Cartesian plane. So we might see a function f of x, it looks like a curvy line, and here we're plotting in 2D. We also call this plane R2. In Calc 3, what we're going to be talking about is we're going to be talking about vectors, we're going to be talking about multivariable functions, and we're going to be working in three dimensions. So the axis that comes out of the page towards you we will call X, the axis that goes left and right we'll call Y, and the axis that goes up and down vertically is what we'll call the Z axis. So that gives us three variables. Now we're in 3D. Sometimes we'll call this space R3. Now to motivate this three-dimensional coordinate system or to give you a, a good visualization, I'd like you to imagine that you're sitting in a room. Okay, so let's imagine that you're in a room, maybe in a classroom, and you've got the front wall, maybe there's a chalkboard or a whiteboard on the front wall, and maybe your teacher is standing at the front pointing out things on the front wall, and they have some sort of hairdo, uh, and there they are. So let's label this front wall. Now there's also a side wall, so let's label this side over here side wall, and so that's some sort of sidewall, maybe it's got a window, and then presumably your desk is, is on the floor. Okay, so this is the floor. And so the 3D coordinate system, you can think about these axes as being right along the seams of the wall. So right up here, this vertical axis, this is what we mean by our z-axis, going left and right, this is our y-axis, and then coming straight out towards you is what we mean by that x-axis. Okay, and so this front wall, we would refer to that as the yz plane. And in the yz plane, you haven't come out at all. In other words, x equals zero. In the floor, so if we think about the floor, x and y, this is the x-y plane, and we haven't lifted up in the z direction at all, so z equals zero. And over here on the side wall, this is the x-z plane, so I'll label this side right there. And in the xz plane, we haven't slid left or right at all, and so y equals zero. Okay? So I think that's a good visualization to keep in mind. For practice, let's look at plotting a point given by 2, 3, and 5. Let's plot that point in 3D. Now, the first component is x, the second component is y, and the third component is z. So let's look at how we would plot that point. We need to move out two units in the x direction. We need to move over three units in the y direction, and then up one, two, three, four, five in the z. And it's kind of hard to draw that point hanging out in space. So what I recommend is that I recommend that you draw a little rectangular prism to help visualize that. So I'm going to draw that here. Maybe I'll draw that in a, a pretty light color so that we um, just use it as a guide. And let's see, I need to go up. We'll go up to five units here. And we'll keep drawing this rectangular prism, sort of a perspective drawing. Let's see if we get it, get it right here. Let's see, kind of come down a little bit. And then we'll go over and back. Okay, so roughly speaking, that's a pretty decent rectangular prism that's coming uh, out to over 3 and up 5. And so our point of interest is the front corner of this box. That front corner is the point 2, 3, 5. 
Okay, let's do another example. Let's sketch the set of points which satisfies z equals 5 in 3D. Now keep in mind that z is forced to be 5. z has to be 5. But x and y can be anything. Right? Z, x and y are unconstrained. z has to be 5, but x and y can be anything you want. So let's see, we have to be up here at 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But again, x and y can be anything. And so what that gives us is it gives us a plane. I'll try to draw that again with a perspective drawing. This gives us a plane which is parallel to the xy plane. Try to draw that nicely here. OK, so we get some sort of plane. It goes on, certainly in all uh, x, y directions. It's infinite. It's, it's an infinite plane. I, I've drawn it finite because I can't draw forever, of course. And sometimes it's nice to darken in the axis that comes up out of the top of this thing. It looks like a post-it note on top of a pencil or something like that. So it's a plane parallel to the x, y plane. Great. The last thing I want to talk about here is the distance formula in 3D. And the distance formula in 3D says let P1 and P2 be two points in R3. So we will describe point P1 by its x, y, z coordinates, x1, y1, z1. And P2 will be described by its coordinates, x2, y2, and z2. So we've got two points in 3 space and the distance from P1 to P2 is given by the following formula. So we'll use the vertical bars to denote the magnitude or the distance between those two points. It equals the square root of x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared plus z1 minus z2 squared.